Alrighty, so it's time to do one of the more anticipated season preview in the season preview series this season. And that, of course, is doing the season preview for the San Jose Earthquakes. Now, I am really reluctant to use the word hope and optimism in terms of this upcoming season for the Quakes. Because I've said this many times before and I'll say it again. Every time when I said that there is hope and that this team is going to be decent, they somehow find ways to cr crush that hope and suffer a major setback to a point where they are one of those teams that is the reason why I've mentioned they're one of the worst teams in the league for the past couple of seasons and they're just stuck in this this kind kind of endless dojum of being near the bottom of the standings and also at times maybe one or two years being a playoff team and therefore but when you look at what this team is starting to build and also just most importantly the identity and the culture that this team is trying to build. I mean, it's hard to not actually buy into it with the way that this team is starting to create a culture and identity very similar to what we see with the Philadelphia Union. This is a team that heavily believes in the academy, which we have started to see that, especially with the way that they made a documentary about that from, from uh, BR Sports. But also the fact that, you know, when you also look at the, the team that is built for this season, I mean, there's definitely a lot of good pieces that you could say that this team could be on the fringe of being a playoff team. Now, that being said, last season was not so. I mean, last season was an absolute disastrous year, and I, I think everybody saw that one coming with the way that when Almeida was still in charge of this team. I mean, I even said it personally, too, that this team was going no. Where last season, if Almeida is still in charge, you can clearly see he doesn't want to be there. And not only that that turns out to be the truth, but it also turns out that he basically sabotaged the team where he was basically daring the team to fire him. And by the time they did fired him and bring in Alice Carvalho, who tried his best in te terms of st steady the ship, which he did kind of did that, but still it was not enough to get this team out of last place with an 8-11-15 record and finished with 35 points. In fact... Uh, 35 points is a lot of points for a team that finished dead last in their respective conference. I mean, I don't remember in the past uh, five season or, or so, or even maybe the past 10 season that a team have finished dead last in its respective conference and have got more than 35 points. Maybe back in the early 2000, 2010s and in the mid 2010s when the league was still like maybe 10 or 11 teams per conference. But yeah, that's a very high amount of points and that's a lot of win for a team that finished dead last and also just kind of shows you how competitive the the western conference is and there really isn't a team last season in the western conference that really bought them out like what we we saw uh at times uh in the past with teams in the west and in the east that finished dead last in the standings but nevertheless uh they of course did not make it to the playoffs obviously finishing 14th in the standings and then in the previous year, they also did not make it to playoffs. They did finish in 10th place with a 10, 11, and 13 record. The only thing I will say about that year is that they at least were competitive in terms of trying to make it to the playoffs, but they just ran out of steam and especially lose those crucial games uh, when it really matters for them to make it to the playoffs. Well, I heard that before in terms of talking about the San Jose Earthquakes. But yeah, they finished with 41 points. And as I said, they did not make it to the playoffs in 2020. They did make it to the playoffs, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that because the playoffs was expanded and they were the beneficial in the Western Conference, being the, the team in the 8th seed and the expanded playoffs. But they did finish with a 8-6-9 a and nine record and finish with 30 points, uh, and they lose to Sporting KC in the first round. In a game where, I will give the Quakes credit, you know, they fought very hard in, in that game. It was kind of a bit of a soul cr crushing loss, the fact that the team played very well against Sporting KC, gave them all they can handle, but unfortunately they kind of lay an egg uh, in that game game in the PK shootout. And not just lay an egg, but literally lay an egg in, in the PK shootout against Sporting KC. Though in 2019, they once again finished in 8th position, but obviously this was the, the year, unlike in the COVID short year, they don't get the benefit of the playoffs being expanded and they just miss out on the playoffs on the final day of the season on uh, that loss against the Timbers. 13-5 and 16 is the record and they finished with 44 points. And then in 2018, yeah, let's not talk about 2018. I mean, that. besides the fact that they not only finished dead last, it was 
was by far the worst season in this franchise history. Only four wins and also one of the worst season we have ever seen an MLS team suffer throughout the entire year as four wins, nine draw, and 21 losses with just 21 points to speak of and definitely did not make it to the playoffs. Now, in terms of some of the transfer that they made this offseason, obviously the biggest signings that they made this offseason is getting Carlos Gray. So, and you know, I was actually kind of surprised the fact that the Quakes were able to to get his signature. I mean, I know that when there was a rumor that Carlos Grezo could potentially come back to MLS, and especially he mentioned the fact that it's going to be one of the free California team that is going to get him. I didn't think the Quakes were going to be that California team. I mean, I thought for sure that it was probably going to be LAFC, knowing the fact that they need to uh, find a replacement for Sifuntes when they eventually sell them him off. And, you know, it would make sense to replace one Ecuadorian with an another like-for-like like Ecuadorian, but give credit to the Quakes and give credit to Chris Lynch being aggressive and really, for the for one of the few time, they actually spent man, money and spent a record transfer fee in order to get Carlos Grezo and on him on a DP contract. They also got a new goalkeeper in Daniel uh, uh, from Brazil. And then recently, they signed Jonathan Mensa from the Columbus crew. And again, this is also another very very surprising signings in a way where I think if Nathan didn't get get injured there's no doubt I didn't think the Quakes were going to be thinking about signing Jonathan Mensa. I mean I know Chris Leach has mentioned the fact that this was in the works but I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that with Nathan suffering a, a season ending ACL injury they desperately need, need a re replacement for him and Jonathan Mensa is definitely going to be the guy and you could even argue he could be, be even a slightly better upgrade than what Nathan is because you know I know there's some have said that he has started to kind of fall off a little bit and we definitely saw a little bit of that in the past two seasons for the Columbus crew but he's still a guy that you know I think he, he can still be a leader to the to this team I mean he was a leader for this crew team and were a big part of that run that they had in MLS Cup especially organized the back line and if you can show at least some sort of that quality and bring into this Quakes team that will really help the, the back line of this team and notice I'm going to mention a lot about the back line of this team because that is probably the biggest uncertainty coming into the season for this Quakes team uh they also got Michael Bodismo off of the re-entry draft and then in the super draft they signed Daniel uh, Mune as part of more de defensive reinforcement that this team desperately need this offseason now in terms of some of the players that's no longer here uh Eric Rometty of course no longer with the Quakes, not a big surprise because you know pretty much all the Mateus Almeida got guys have now been no longer with this team ever since Almeida uh, was fired last season. Uh, they also let go of said Haji, and again, you know, this is another example of the early days when the Quakes did try their best to maybe produce talent in the academy and maybe produce guys from the Super Draft, and it just kind of turns out to be a dud. And said Haji is definitely one of those players that just really never do love to a way where I was hoping he can can be a regular starter maybe the Quakes can sell them off for or sell him off for some sort of profit uh they also lost Matt Brizano and this is kind of a bittersweet moment because Matt Brizano has been with this team for a very long long time and it's kind of bittersweet to see him finally go and that that you know the the best memory of Matt Brizano will always be that U.S. Open Cup game against the Sounders I'll never forget of that PK shootout uh, that he had against the Sounders, saving those penalty and giving the, the Quakes to move on into the next round, which we'll not talk about what happened in that next round game against Sacramento. Uh, they also let go of Jan Grekush, Gilbert Funtes, and George Asamani as some of the players that they decide not to resign. Now, in terms of the strength of this team, it's got to be the attack and midfield. And it's not often I say the attack is the strength of this team for... A long time at least for the past half decades or so that has always been at times been a weakness for this team but I think when you look at the the front six of this team I feel like this is a very underrated front six I mean when you look up on the attacking end you got Jeremy Obovese a guy that I know he's going to be a guaranteed 10 plus goal scored and even a 15 plus goal scored and continue to to uh get the Portland Timbers nightmares of, of regretting uh and to let him him go uh to join the Quakes but also when you all look in the wing area Christian Espinoza one of the most underrated winger a guy that can can be very good in terms of deli 
those dangerous ball from the wing. And then on the left, you got the highly talented K Cow, who I'm really hoping that he's going to, to have a, a decent season to a point where eventually he is going to be sell off for a profit. Again, he's been linked with a lot of big club recently because of that good good uh, performance that he has with the national team during the January camp. And then uh, the guy that is pulling the string in that number 10 position, Jamero Montero, a guy that, again, again there's a reason why the, the union uh, ra rated him very well and that, again, I think it was maybe a little bit of a mistake, the fact that the union decided to let him go. Although, again, I think Montero w was kind of burning bridges with the union to a point where he just didn't want to re re-sign with them and now he brought his talent with the quakes and you saw last season there's been a couple of times why he can be be a great great player i mean not really a number 10 but more like a playmaking number eight that we saw during his time with the union and then in the midfield you know if um both either jutson or jackson you can have a bounce back season and i haven't even got to mention about carlos Correzo and that again I think this signing is a huge signing for, for the Quakes because I think for many teams, one of the big things that they need besides uh, a number 10 is you want to get a, a good, decent number 6. A kind of like a Diego Chara or Jose Martinez kind, kind of type of player. And I think Carlos Correzo can do that. I mean, we saw it during his day with FC Dallas, how good he is. And eventually Dallas sell him off for a profit. And this is also a guy that has been, been appearing multiple times in Europe in the Bundesliga with Augsburg and even uh, playing for the Ecuadorian national team during the World Cup. And again, the fact that now he's coming back into the league and, you know, I have a feeling he, he could be right up there in terms of the level that that uh, we see in terms of the best number six in the league. Uh, I, I think that's a huge addition. And not, not to mention, you know, one of the most important thing about having a good number six is that now he is going to be the guy that can protect a... a, a uh, back line uh, like no other and that's important for this Quakes team because as I will mention about the the weakness and actually I forgot to put the the weakness there besides goalkeeping being the the back line you know if he can can be able to pr protect this fragile back line this will will allow the the attacker to push more forward and that is definitely great news especially you know if you allow your attackers to to push up more further and you'll be the guy that do the dirty work and, and stop any potential uh, dangerous chances your opposition throw. And yeah, that, that definitely uh, me, means that, that you're going to be uh, more successful going forward on the attacking end. And this is why I said that, you know, you know, last season I thought the, the Quakes, their attack was, was decent last year, but I think it's just going to get even better, especially the fact that they have a, a guy that can, can protect the, the back line and they, are offer more freedom in terms of going forward instead of maybe being a little bit cautious knowing the fact that if they commit too much forward then they're going to get it absolutely exposed in the back because they don't have a re really decent midfield and a guy like a, a number six like Carlos Correzo uh, in that position now as I said the weakness of this team you know again I can't believe I didn't put uh defense as one of the the thing i mean it's almost like like that's that's kind of kind of is a forgotten thing for the quakes la last season and even in this off season that seems like it's been a forgotten kind of agenda because again they didn't really make any improvement in the back line besides getting jonathan menza uh but again there's question about this this back line especially uh the center back partnership and that i'm just hoping jonathan menza doesn't drop off too much there's question about rock Rodriguez too. I mean, he was okay last season, but wasn't great. And then when you also look at the the fullbacks too, you know, with Akpo and and Triaco, there's a big question about that them too because you know I, I didn't think they were spectacular last season either. So yeah, the back line is is a big question of this team. Hopefully they're not going to be be leaking goals uh, this year. But also there's question about the goalkeeping too. Again, you know, with them bringing Daniel. Uh, this off season and spending an international spot on that, which I'm not a big fan of. I think that's gonna really create a very interesting situation of you know, is JT Marksinkowski the long term future of this team? Because last season, uh, well, Marksinkowski did make some some big save and at times keep this team in games. He also made some bad mistake and 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 just commit made some some error that you know a, a starting caliber MLS goalkeeper of his style should not be making those those air and in other words i think he's he was kind of inconsistent and when you're an in inconsistent goalkeeper yeah that's just simply not not good enough to 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 be be a regular starter in this league game in and game outs 
So that's going to be a big question heading into this season two. But heading now to the free free big question again, talking about the back line. Can they stop leaking goals and be sort of competent? I mean, this was by far the worst defensive team last season. And we're just going to hope that, you know, with the way that this back line... Um, I think last season they tried to address that during the summer transfer window, and it seems like maybe they're, they they realized that, well, we made our move last summer, so we're just going to have to ride it out and hope this is going to be, be the best. And also with the addition of Jonathan Mensa, that hopefully this back line will can, can stop leaking goal and sort of be... be be competent uh but that that is definitely one of the big big question and the other big question is the fact that how high the ceiling can be k cow of course reach again you know as i said before uh yesterday in my news of the week episode i feel like you know for the quakes if they want to sell k cow this is probably not the time to do so i would say wait at least until the summer trans window and especially if he started to play out of his mind you want to get get more value all of him and again you know just looking at how he played uh during that time with the u.s men's national team you can definitely see some flat flashes of, of brilliance that he can he can uh bring to this quakes team which is why you know last season i know it was a rough season for him but you know now that he, he has a guy like Lu- luchi gonzalez and knowing that luchi gonzalez has had that history of developing some some good young guys from the fc dallas uh academy and then eventually from the main team and sell them all for a profit there could be a good case that that could be the same with k cow and speaking of luchi gonzalez you know the third big question i ha- have with this team is just simply him and the fact that can he continue to implement the philosophy of developing young talent while also get this team back to playoff contention now i haven't used the word playoff at all in this season preview when i talk about the quakes because I do think that this t- team is still on the fringe uh, of doing so. Even with a lot of these good pieces, I think if they are going to be a playoff team, uh, I think the big thing is that the, everything needs to, to go right, especially the back line. But if they can start to develop some young talent and that they have this philosophy that is starting to be very similar to the Philadelphia Union, uh, really trust in your academy while basically signing some, some decent veteran player to get your team to be a competitive team in your respective conference, then yeah, I think think you know this could could work well in that, especially Luchi Gonzalez. I know you know things didn't quite work out in his latter part with FC Dallas, but he is a guy that I I, I think could 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 do well in terms of committing in this project and committing this new identity that the Quakes of course can have. But I'm just excited about the part part with the young talent because this Quakes team they have a lot of good young young talent I mean k Cow is one of those names that I mentioned other names include Nick Chris who I'm excited to see how he's going to do and even uh further down the line Cruz Medina another guy that I think a lot of people will know hit his name uh in the future too because he's doing not only a very good job with the the Quakes two team in MLS next pro but you see what he's doing with the the U.S. youth national team and in the u17 team this is a kid that definitely had ha- has chance to be a very good good talented player and it's great to see that the quakes of course are developing players and started again trying to become come one of those teams that really invest in the academy and it and get, will be be rewarded because because of, of that and maybe be be a playoff contention like we, what we see with teams that have good academy like fc dallas and the Philadelphia Union, and and to some extent the New York Red Bulls too. Now the bonus question for this Quakes team is: Can JT Marksinkowski and Jackson Yo have a bounce back season after a rough year last year? And I'll, I'll maybe even throw Jutson into that frame too. I mean, as I mentioned, JT Marksinkowski, you know he's got to have to be be better this season because with now more competition in the wing and Daniel, uh, I think he he knows that he's gonna have have to play well if he wants to keep that that number one position but uh for jackson yo again he basically suffered a, a curse that many quakes player have always suffered whenever they go uh with the u.s men's national team or even being an import, important part of of the the u.s uh national team whether it's in the youth level or in the senior level that they just are never the same once they come back from it and uh, and hopefully that's not the case for jackson yo you know i know he has a, a a lot of potential to be a decent player but again you know you know last year was a huge setback of a season and that he needs to be 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 good and hope 
hope that he can of course bounce back and the same goes with Judson too who hasn't really been as good as what we saw a couple of years ago but a lot of that has to do with the fact that he hasn't been able to stay healthy for the past couple couple of well not for the past couple of seasons but more like for the the last two seasons or so for him. but there you have it that is pretty much it for the season preview of the san jose earthquakes if you're a quakes fan like myself what do you think is the strength the weakness and the free big question facing this team and do you think this is a uh a, a consider a playoff team i mean for me i still don't think this is a playoff team but i do truly believe that there is some some po positive kind of kind of outlook of this team and it's not as dark and dingy as what we see seen for the past couple of years but that being said you know this team has has been fooling me me multiple time with this before and that again i'm just hoping one day eventually they'll, they'll get to a point where they get get their acts together and and really start started to develop themselves to be a competent team because we've seen so many teams in in this league that has had some some bad season and it, and has been bad for so long and that you know i feel bad for for those teams too but it, it even sucks the fact that one of those teams is the is the one that you you support so again for the quakes hopefully this season uh you know they i would say that this season the expectation is going to be pretty low because anytime we finish dead last last season in in the western conference uh it's nothing but 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 up for for them and if they can improve uh this season to a point where they could be on the fringe of a playoff team or even if they can make it to the playoffs, I think it's going to consider a, a success and a, a a step forward in terms of this new identity that they're looking to t trying to to embed it in their their team. But like I said, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys do like, smash the subscribe button, and yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.